Hey everyone, welcome to this course on routers. In the first module of this course, I will cover the basics of a router on Integromat and show you how to use it in a scenario. The router is an inbuilt tool that enables the creation of nonlinear integrations. Let me explain a little more in detail. Using a router, you can branch your scenario into multiple routes to process incoming data separately on each route and perform different actions on each route. Additionally, you can create filters on each route to specify rules for data processing. We will discuss filters in detail in a separate course. Here are some pointers to remember when working with routers. One, a router takes data from preceding modules and passes it to the modules on multiple adjacent routes. Two, a bundle passes through the routes in the order in which the routes are created. Three, a bundle passes through all the routes that either don't contain a filter or wherein the condition of the filter is met. 4. A bundle passes through the fallback route only if it doesn't pass through any other route. We will cover the fallback route in detail in the next module of this course. Now, let's take a look at this scenario that employs a router. The goal of this scenario is to fetch email attachments, upload all files to Dropbox, and upload only image files to Google Drive. It begins with the Gmail Watch Emails module. You need to add your connection and then choose a folder. So let's select the inbox. Under criteria, let's select only unread emails. You may also mark an unread email as read using this option. And lastly, since we want to work with one email at a time, the maximum number of results is set to one. It's important to note here that an iterator is used to iterate through an array of attachments in order to process multiple attachments and upload them one by one to Dropbox or Drive. The iterator need not be used if you need to process a single attachment. If you'd like to learn more about the iterator and array aggregator, we have a course that explains these two powerful inbuilt tools and details. So be sure to check it out. The iterator can be found under tools here. Inside the iterator, simply map the attachments array from the Gmail module. OK? A router can also be added by selecting it from the Tools menu. A great thing about routers is that there is no limit to the number of routes originating from a router. And each route can be further branched into multiple routes in order to work with more complex integrations. Now, on the top route is the Dropbox Upload a File module. So, choose a folder that you want the files to be uploaded to. Here, under Source File, simply select the iterator. You may also choose the Map option, and if you'd like to, modify the file name by manipulating the name using an expression. Let's leave it as it is. On the bottom route is the Google Drive Upload a File module. Choose a Destination, Target folder, and also select the iterator as a source file. Clicking the route between the router and the Google Drive module will open up the filter setting for this route. Since only image files are to pass through this filter to Google Drive, we have labeled the filter images and mapped the MIME type element from the iterator module here. To check if the MIME type contains the term image, the contains case insensitive text operator is selected and the term image is typed in below. Simple, right? Okay. It's time to test the scenario. Ensure that you have at least one unread email in your inbox with two attachments, one image file and another of any other file type. Before you run the scenario once, you need to choose where to start processing data from by right-clicking the Gmail module. You can select all mail or manually select an email. Now, let's execute the scenario once by clicking the Run Once button. All right, the scenario executed perfectly. Now let's look at the output of each module starting with the Gmail module. Here you can see that one email was returned and if you scroll down, you see that the attachment array contains two collection, one corresponding to each file. By expanding a collection, you can see the file name, MIME type, etc. Next, Looking at the output of the iterator, you can see that it simply extracted the two collections from the array and returned them as two bundles of data. This enables each file to be processed separately. Now, let's look at the first route after the router which leads to the Dropbox module. 
This route contains no filter and therefore both bundles of data passed through and both files were uploaded to Dropbox one after the other, leading to two operations being consumed by the Dropbox module. On the other hand, only one of the two bundles met the filters criteria on the second route, and the image file was uploaded to Google Drive. It's important to keep in mind that each route after a router is processed sequentially, one after the other, from top to bottom, and not simultaneously. By default, the routes are processed in the order in which they are created. You can click the Auto Align button at any time to see the arrangement of the routes. That said, you might want a particular route to be executed first, or rearrange the order of the routes completely. To do that, simply unlink all the routes and reattach them in the order in which you would like them to be executed. It's really that simple. So that covers the introduction and fundamentals of routers. In the next lesson, we'll learn about the fallback route and when to use it in a scenario. See you in the next lesson.